Hey everyone, welcome to Dark Souls. It's been a while since I played this game. I think it was actually like 2018, right after the remastered came out. Uh, uh, remastered edition, I mean, came out. I didn't even play through the whole thing then. I think the farthest I got was Quaylog, and then I kind of just gave up. Because I'd actually played Dark Souls Prepare to Die edition a few months earlier. Uh, I think late 2017, so... I just really wasn't into going through Dark Souls again, but I've been antsy to get into another Dark Souls playthrough these last few months, so let's jump into Dark Souls 1 Remastered. <laughs> Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away. To await the end of the world. This is your fate. Kagatsuchi after the Shinto God of Fire. I might rework that name at some point down the road in future games if I do more of these videos. Her build is going to be a battle mage of sorts, a hybrid swordswoman and pyromancer. I was going to start with pyromancer, but the dex is really low on that build, so I went with wanderer, which has a decently high levels of both de intelligence and dex. And at this point, I did not realize that pyromancy does not scale with intelligence. Now, you see, this is what happens when you don't play a game for you know, some three odd years. I fell for the friggin' boulder trick. Oldest trick in the book. Uh, I guess when this game came out, it was a new trick for him, but you get what I mean. Oh, also, I killed Oscar. I feel terrible about that. I thought I was doing him a favor. He, he said he was dying. I thought, okay, well, then I'll, I'll kill him, like, save him from going hollow and stuff, but it, it didn't appear as if he saw that the same way. Thankfully, there isn't a big downside to that. Except the weight of the guilt on my conscience. First things first, I gotta get to the depth and find the big ember and the guy that sells pyromancy. Fortunately, that means dealing with Capra first. Oh, and getting through all this mess. Before I do any of that, though, I'm gonna go get my Uchi Katana. I remember I gotta kill this merchant, but first I'm gonna buy the repair box from him. Piece of advice, always buy the repair box from him. That and the residence key. I can't remember if the master key opens those doors or not. Then kill him for the Uchi. You know, I could have skipped Taurus Demon because the master key opens that door that lets me get to the Dark Roof Basin. But I didn't because I figured Taurus is never really that hard. And as you can see, I almost died for one after getting trapped like an idiot. You know what really fucking annoys me? Why is it that you can skip entire parts of this game with the master key, but for some reason it won't open the door to the undead berg or the door to the depths? Like, that's stupid. I thought I was being smart when I found the shortcut to the Capra fight, and boy was I wrong. Um, I died so many fucking times with those stupid dogs. <sighs> Rabbit dogs and souls games more iconic Terry. Pro tip, there's three things to remember with the Capra fight. One, it's poorly designed and extremely unfair. Two, kill the dog first. And three, do not get green. That last one could actually be applied to most of the boss fights. I totally forgot this butcher actually puts up a fight. And of course you got more of those damn dogs in this room. So this is where you save the guy who'll sell you the fireman. I died immediately after this because I got greedy. Going for the gargoyles next did not great results. Then I realized I didn't need to be doing this now, so I went to the garden instead. Normally I do this section of the first of Butterfly is one of the easier bosses to kill if you get the timing down. See? Easy. One little detail here is they don't give you the homeward bone until you go up the tower. It's a subtle way of the game telling you there's more to explore. Okay, now onto the gargoyles. That took way longer than expected. Oh, hey, Lawtrex here now. I guess now that I've been to the depths, it means he spawns. You know, I don't think I've ever actually saved him. He usually just shows up at the Firelink Shrine. 
One time he was really pissed at me for no reason. I know he's going to kill the Firekeeper, so normally I'd just kill him now, but I'd like to let the Firekeeper speak again. And now... We go... To Blight Town. Once I'm down here, I'm going to grind out some large Titanite shards, because this next boss can be tricky, and you can basically get your weapon to plus 10 down here, so I'm... Just going to go do that. Also, I grabbed that Firekeeper Soul in New Londo in the process. See, Quaylog was much easier with plus 10 weapons. I definitely didn't die a bunch to her by making stupid moves. That that certainly didn't happen. And now that I've rung both bells, I can move on to the next area. The fortress, which is also a shitty area. But first, I'm going to join the Spider Witch Company and get that Pyromancy spell. Down's useless discharge while I was at it because he's easy to cheese and 20,000 extra souls ain't bad. You really want to clear this area out because you probably won't be returning here until you can quick travel. And then I'm out. I said I'm out. Okay, before heading into the hellhole that is the next area, I decided to get to New Londo to get the very large ember. I tried a couple times, but I'll be honest, I did most of this off camera because I figured it was going to take me a while, and it did. 90 minutes of trying and failing before I got it to work. Did I mention that I hate Sen's Fortress? Because this area sucks. And that is one of the many reasons why. You know, I really hate these boulders. They're like the second worst thing about this entire area. You gotta look around the corner to know when the time to move is, but if you get too close, that happens. See those bloody marks on the elevator? That's a warning. If you don't get off in time, it kills you. Now, I learned that lesson the first time I played this game, and I'm not making that again. That is tattooed in my brain. Well, it's been annoying, but I'm almost at the top. I just need to get past this one last set. God damn it. Ugh, I hate that place. Finally made it to the top, and thankfully they put a bonfire right over here, so you don't have to go do all that again, but still, definitely one of the least enjoyable parts of the game. Hey man, I'd love to stay in chat, but do you not see the boulders bearing down on us? Because, uh, if I keep standing here, I'm going to die. Next boss is the Iron Golem. Let's go get our buddy Tarkus to help us out. Tarkus is a big help against the Iron Golem. He can actually solo him, if I remember correctly. And I died. Well, shit. Pyromancy is actually pretty damn good against him. Oh, shit, he does a lot of damage. Oh, son of a... Yeah, that only took me a couple more tries to take him down. He just does a lot of damage. Because I'm running a low health build, or a medium health build, it kind of puts me at risk of dying in one or two shots. Anyway, it's time to head to the place that needs no introduction. Unless you haven't played this game before. Uh, it's Anorlon. And damn, does it look beautiful on the PS5. So first I'm going to go back and level up my Pyromancy Flame. The guy who is in Firelink is actually in the swamp, and he's gone hollow. So I just need to spawn Kailana, which apparently will happen if I've defeated Quelog. Well, shit. She's not going to spawn, and so my only hope now will be to buy a PS Plus and have someone invade me that has one. That's absolute horse shit. There is a lot of bull and Dark Souls I'll defend, but this isn't one of them. They straight up lock you out of increasing your build. That's just fucked up. Also, the, the egg guy near... Quelog's sister, um, he, he could have done it, and I killed him because I didn't realize that was his purpose, so, uh, uh, yeah. Off camera, I went and got my Uchi plus 14. It took two solid hours of grinding those Dark Race in New Londo, and now I hope to never go back there again, except for I know I have to at least once. Now, before we get on with Anor Londo, let's hit the Asylum. You know, I forgot how easy Stray Demon is when you're this powerful. Uh, I died. Now I'm plus 15, and I can take on Anor Londo and its boss properly. There's another part of Dark Souls I will not defend. This is utter bullshit, and the person that designed this should be ashamed of themselves. I am genuinely shocked they didn't patch this part out or fix it. Like, what were they thinking here? Just give him a regular bow or something. Jesus. Okay, I did it off camera because I was getting pretty pissed off. Um, I got it. It took me like a dozen times. Just gotta roll through it and hope you don't roll off. It's, it's still bullshit, though. Well, this is it. The moment we've all been waiting for. The boss I spent literal days on the first time I played through this game, and the primary reason why I have yet to complete a second full playthrough. Ornstein and Smooth. Yeah, this boss fights way more manageable with a plus 15 weapon. No, 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 I'm not gonna lose it here. I cannot lose it here. I'm so close. I'm one hit away. Yes! 
Oh, Solaire, you are the shit! Damn it, I couldn't hit the button in time, but I'm gonna bow anyways. Yeah, I tell you what, there's all that talk about Lady Demestriku or whatever her name is in Resident Evil 8, but she ain't got shit on Guinevere here. Hey, Lawtrek, remember me? You fucking prick. Alright, next up is the Catacombs. You call that a fireball? This is a fireball. Oh, shit, I missed. Well, let's try that with the second one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, this has not gone well for me. I got two holes to drop into. This one has an item, so I'm choosing this one. Holy crap, there's a Black Knight down here. Hell no, I cannot take him on now. I am noping out of here. And going right into the wheelie skeleton pit. <sighs> There really was no winning there, was there? Hey, bud. Looks like you got a lot of books and, uh, human remains in here. Is that a hobby? Oh, you got a lot of arms. That's, that's always useful. Oh, you got three faces, too. You know, I always thought I could use a second face. Okay, enough small talk. You die now. I know there's a bonfire somewhere up here. I just have to follow these stones to find it. Okay, and then I died on my trip to get them back, and I lost 30,000 souls. That would be my super villain origin story. It only makes sense to deal with Gwendolyn next, considering I just got the Dark Moon Seance Ring. This boss fight is pretty easy once you get the pattern down. That pattern being hiding behind a wall whenever he launches an attack and jumping out of the way when he launches this big spirit attack. I, of course, forgot the pattern and died like five times before I got it. Hey, I got a cool set out of it, and one of the chests is just empty. The fuck? All right, next we're heading to the Duke's archives. I know you think you got the advantage with no fires around and all, but guess what? I got a fireball that doesn't nearly do as much damage as I was hoping it would. Crap. What the fuck? So the first time I played this game, I just winged it through the Crystal Cave and beat Seath on my first try. I did not get as lucky this time. God damn, this area sucks. Especially because of this enemy placement, but especially because of these invisible paths. I literally have no idea where to go, and my pride won't let me look at a map. So I looked at a map. There's a path up here. Didn't even have to deal with that gold golem. What is even happening? Oh, I'm dead. You know, they say you learn something new every day. And today I learned that if you die to Seath, you get cursed. You know, I vaguely remember the Seath fight being a complete mess, and it really is, just the screen gets really, really cluttered. I can't even see what I'm doing here. I'm just mashing the R1 button, hoping I get the kill shot before I die. There we go. Or is it? No, yeah, he's done. And now we go to the hellhole that is Lost Isolith. This area has some of the weirdest enemy placement in the entire game. And by weirdest, I mean lazy. I remember reading somewhere that Hidetaka Miyazaki did not actually design this particular part of the game. They like outsourced it to someone else in the company, which is why it's like this, but it's it's really bad. Like look at these look at these tourist demons over there. They're just placed there without any consideration. There's just like a bunch of them there. Thankfully, because I am ranked two with the Chaos Witch Covenant, I can open this door here. This is crucial, as a failure to do so would result in Solaire being killed, and there is a good reason why you want him alive. This pass is also a shortcut to the core of Lost Isolith, so I can thankfully skip most of this area. There is a Titanite demon here, but once you kill it, the path will be clear. Is what would normally happen, but for some reason, this one respawns. The boss of this area is the Bed of Chaos, and it is without a doubt the worst boss fight in this game. Perhaps in the entire series. The concept is simple. I just have to break these two chains and then attack the witch at the core of this tree thingy. Except the amount of pure bullcrap here almost guarantees you a death every time you enter. Thankfully, these chains are gone even after you die, so you don't have to get it all in one run. But damn is it annoying. Take this, you damn bug. So in order for Solaire to be available for the end game, I have to defeat the centipede demon and talk to him at the Isolith boss fire. Gotta admit, the centipede demon is a pretty stupid boss fight. You're given very little room, and it's kind of hard to hit him without like having a bow. I was almost about to go get a bow and level it up before he got stuck on the ceiling and fell out of the game and died. Next up is the Tomb of the Giants. This is the other thing you need that sunlight maggot for. Insane. What are you doing in the tomb? Are you 
serious when it comes to this. No? Really? Yes. You know, they make one think there's a fine set of trees right down that way. I found a church. Come on, have a look. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Patches. I'm not doing that. I fucking hate these dogs. You see that skeleton there with the bow? There's another one just outside my frame of view who'll kick me off when I walk by. But I ain't falling for that this time. Why is there a whole room of fucking pinwheels here? Nito is actually a pretty cool boss fight, except for the fact that you have this tendency to take a lot of damage on the route two here so you use a lot of your aestus and that's only made worse by the fact that you take a significant amount of fall damage when you enter his arena so it's almost like you have to kindle that bonfire up there just for this one boss fight that is if you don't come here with a plus 15 weapon and a maxed out attack stat so next i'm going to go after sif and it's mainly because i've already done the um the bonus content that you get when you go deal with the artorias dlc first and uh, one, it, it wasn't too much worth it, and two, it was really depressing, and I would rather not go through that again. So, we're just gonna deal with him now, and get the Covenant of Artorias, and then we will head to deal with the Four Kings. Okay, so if Extra Life lied to me, they are not weak to fire. The Four Kings are definitely the most difficult of the late game bosses, but not too hard just stick behind them and take your healing opportunities and with the last of the lord's souls captured we can now go to the kiln of the first flame and take on gwyn i'm just kidding come on let's go do the dlc i uh forgot how to actually get to the dlc I know I have to kill this Hydra first and kill a golem in the Duke's archives, but I can't remember what the other piece of this puzzle is. So I eventually gave up and just looked up a guide. You have to go find this bronze golem all the way at the back of the lake here and kill him. Then you have to come back and touch this mist. Could they have made that any more difficult? So the first boss of the DLC appears pretty much right away. You just gotta walk through this cave and there it is. And it's a spammy boss too. Those are always fun. That was sarcasm, by the way. Look, it's not Bloodborne Guy. So the next boss is Artorias, and he is one of my favorite fights in the entire game. Scratch that. He's one of my favorite fights in the entire series. So I'm just going to show you the fight and let it speak for itself. And there it is. That took me about an hour, all told, to beat him. He's a very rhythm-heavy boss. 
there are some parts of it that I think could be better. Some parts when it looks like the hitboxes are just way too big, when your iframes feel like they're being ignored. Uh, and just, just some of his follow-ups can, can kind of stun lock you or can just lock you in a position where you are going to take a fatal hit. So that I don't like that. But other than those small parts, this is one of the most fun and legitimately challenging boss fights in all of Dark Souls. Oh, hell no. So this here is the DLC content that I was referring to when I was talking about Sif. You save her from the living humanity here, and she'll recognize you when you fight her if you haven't fought her already. Say, wasn't really worth doing all the extra effort to get that. I vividly remember Manus being a pain in the ass, and god damn is he! He's just thrashing about the arena with seemingly no pattern. This makes it hard to time your dodges, because you never know in which direction he's gonna go or where he's gonna land. So you kinda just have to wing it. Die, you mother... And there lies Dusk on the ground. You can't talk to her, I, I tried. She just, just keeps doing that. There is one more boss left in the DLC, and that is Black Dragon Calamite. However, I forgot how to find him. So, what you gotta do is you gotta get the crest key from this mimic here. Go up here, talk to this giant, but not before you've went to Calamite's location at least once, which is located in this little side path next to the elevator here. Once you've done that, he'll ask you if you need any help, and then he'll be a total badass and shoot Calamite out of the sky with a giant arrow. Calamite is another frustrating boss fight. Not because it's particularly hard, you actually do a fairly good amount of damage to him. His attacks just do a lot of damage and have fairly large hitboxes, and the room to dodge is really small. Uh, and you end up getting hit a lot, so kind of like Manish, you kind of just got to wing it and hope that you actually dodge. Anywho, I beat him in three tries and got the Calamity Ring, which doubles the damage you take. Wow, that's useless. I just realized I hadn't beat Gaping Dragon yet, so let me do that real quick. The depths are so much quicker when you're level 81. And he's down. And now, we can enter the kiln of the first flame, and take on Gwyn. For real this time. So this over here? This is why you want to save Sele- Where is his summon sign? Oh, god damn it. Okay, as I was saying, this is why you want to save Solaire. He'll help you with Gwyn, and you're gonna want all the help you can get. This might be a controversial opinion, but Gwyn is a pretty cheap boss fight. I would actually rate him as one of the worst boss fights in the game. I understand why it's that way. This is the final boss. It has to be, you know, harder than the rest of the game. But... It could be a little more balanced. He just does so much damage, and he can lock you into this combo that just straight up one-shots you. But thankfully, you do a lot of damage as well, so with our good friend Solaire here being a distraction, you can deal with him in no time. And now that our character has gotten her revenge on Gwyn, we have to choose. Do we link the flame, or do we leave and become a Dark Lord? Yeah, I'm leaving. I gave my character the motivation at the start of the game that she's out for revenge on Gwyn. Why would she then do the same thing that left her in the position she's in now? My other reason is that this clearly didn't work the first time. Linking the flame led to this whole mess, so why would it work now? The Age of Light is over. Linking the flame is just going to start the cycle over again. And I didn't do all that to make the same damn mistake. And with that, we have reached the end of Dark Souls. Wow. I did not expect Dark Souls to be the first game I did a video on. This obviously was my first time doing this type of video, so there's going to be some rough edges, some ideas I need to flesh out, 
but I did my best with this. I feel like I learned a lot just doing this video in itself. So hopefully, as I go forward, I will get a lot better at this. But anyway, I want to thank everyone who watched this whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do the things that engage the algorithm and such. Comments and constructive criticism will be appreciated. Uh, let me know if there's any other games you'd like to see me play. I can't guarantee I'm going to play them, but it'd be nice to get some feedback. And I hope you stick around for my next video, which will come out... Uh, I can't give you a guarantee on that one, whenever it's done.